200 euro, which I resold for 800 dollars. Brand new pair, we're going for 1,008 or 2,000 on the market. Throughout the years, I joined Facebook groups, I bought off eBay, I bought off in person, Twitter. Easy. Retail price is 220, and I uh, resell for a few grand. Sneakers. Both the passion and the marketplace has grown to be bigger than ever. Today we will be taking an exclusive look at the sneaker culture along with the economic side of it. The sneaker industry itself has a value of $55 billion. This industry is built off giant footwear companies such as Nike and Adidas. They carefully control the supply and demand for sneakers. This spawned the secondary market as we know of today. The secondary market has a value of $1.2 billion, where the majority of its contributors are teens. In the sneaker economy, everyone is tracking the newest release happening nearly every week. The hottest of the bunch are instantly bought and resold to clients for two or three times retail. For some, sneakers are a way of income. Some spend hours and days standing in line for the newest kicks. For the sneaker enthusiasts, aka the sneakerheads, they do it for the culture, rocking the newest, most freshest kicks. It is a part of the sneaker culture, a ode to the beginning. To get a better understanding of how this billion dollar market came to be, Let's dive into some history. Sneakers really got its start back in the early 1900s when Marquis Converse opened the Converse Rubber Shoe Company. It was a rubber shoe manufacturer which provided rubber sold footwear for men and women. It soon transitioned onto the hardwood where the company released the Converse All Star back in 1917. Converse All Star. They started out on the basketball court, but now they're everywhere. You could get yours in selected colors, in high or low top, and only made of canvas. In the early 1970s, a German company by the name of Adidas, founded by the Dassler brothers, introduced leather and suede sneakers to the market. Only when the pro basketball players in the Harlem Rucker tournament started to wear them, the sneaker culture started to expand. In the early 1980s, we saw the appearance of brands like Reebok with the release of the Reebok Pump basketball shoes and Puma with their take on the newly popularized basketball shoes. But the sneaker culture really started to boom in the mid 80s. On September 15th, Nike created a revolutionary new basketball shoe. On October 18th, the NBA threw them out of the game. Fortunately, the NBA can't stop you from wearing them. The very first Air Jordan was banned from the NBA for not fitting the color standards. Jordan wore them anyways and faced a fine of $5,000 each game. This was a huge marketing opportunity for Nike, where the shoe presented itself to the marketplace. In 1986, one year after the Jordan's release, Run DMC encouraged 16,000 fans to hold up their own Adidas with their hit song, My Adidas. The growth in hip-hop helped boost the sneaker culture where people back in the days wanted more flavor to their styles in order to contrast with the type of music they like. With the release of sneakers like the Adidas Shell Toe and the Air Force Ones, sports played a huge role in the sneaker community where sports transitioned from being strictly athletics to more pop culture. The boom in signature shoes for athletes and musicians provided the essential components to birth a community where the goal was to seek the most freshest limited edition models. What rappers wore started to go mainstream into street culture. Skateboard came along the way and blended these unique subcultures into one seamless culture with mythic proportions. It's the consumers that want to emulate their icons by wearing the same things they wear. It is a huge culture where so many subjects are connected. But how does these sneaker enthusiasts resell and what are their stories inside this secondary market? To find out, we went and visited sneakerheads and sneaker resellers. Yes. Uh, 
Hi, my name is Moni and I'm a sneaker collector and I'm also a, let's say, part of the sneaker seller. Hi, my name is Richard and I collect sneakers and I resell sneakers. I first got, got into sneakers when I was 11, 12 years old and that was through sports. So um, I went to Thailand with my parents and they bought me my first pair of shoes which was um, a T90 Nike and each time I would visit Thailand I would get one brand new pair of shoes but then when I uh, first when I moved to America uh, in 2015 um, I realized that you could make money off of sneakers so my first pair of Jordans were the Jordan 1 Westbrooks and I didn't know much about them I just knew they were Jordans um, they were like general GRs but um, that was my first pair and uh, my first ever resale experience was was through the Yeezy 350 Moon Rocks. I bought it um, off Farfetch for $200 and I resold them for $800 and then I realized that there was a busy business that could be made off shoes. In fact, most of the sneakers being resold now is based online in websites like StockX, Flight Club, Stadium Goods and much more. But will sneaker reselling still be around in the future? Sneaker reselling will always be here whether it's 5 years or 10 years from now because sneakers has known to be more and more difficult to get and the only way that we can get certain shoes is to pay a premium for it therefore we have to go through the reseller. Although sneakerheads hate them, they can't live without the sneaker resellers. The sneaker resellers control the marketplace it is an unregulated market, a free market, where the prices of those shoes are determined by the consumers. So this is your sneaker collection? Yeah, that's right. What factors make you decide what to invest in, in terms of sneakers? So usually before buying a pair of sneakers, the first thing that I would consider is the price. Whether it's a good price for me to buy it and stock it up for the future in case the price goes up or is it too high and I know that the price is going to go lower in the future. So, for example, the Yeezy Zebra, when it first came out, the resale value was around 1,003 US dollars. But from my inside infos, I knew that there was going to be a second drop a few months later, which would obviously drive the resale value down. So, uh, it dropped from 1,300 to about 400 after the second release and it slightly went back up to 600 now but you can see how this affects the market and makes me decide whether I should buy it now or later in the future. The secondary market matters so much that brands like Nike and Jordan use data from the consumers in order to create their retail price. However, the demand for sneakers got so high people were camped out days ahead of the new release. In some cities, people broke down doors, some got arrested. The market soon transitioned its most limited shoes online, where the newest sneakers can be bought with a click of a button. There were some times that I did camp out for a pair of shoes like the AJ6 Infrared. I camped at uh, Somerset 313. I was there around 5 p.m. and I camped the whole night until 10 or 11 p.m. the next day when they opened the store and we got about six pairs of that shoes that day, yeah. So in the sneaker culture nowadays, there's a difference between an OG and a retro. So the OG, as the name states, means original, which is basically the first time that the shoes came out. So this AJ1 is the first Jordan that ever released to the public and it made his first appearance in 1985 so this is the OG and then the second time that it came out was in 1994 so it was the first time that we call it a retro so this pair is from 1994 and then moving on the timeline it came out again around 2001 and then 2013 and then there was another retro in 2016 so you see with Jordan, they keep remaking the same shoes and releasing it again and again as time goes by. But how can reselling be beneficial to the younger generation? And should they try it? Um, so I do think that younger generation should start reselling sneakers or at least collect sneakers because 
I think throughout through reselling sneakers, you get a learning curve of experiencing the real world, such as dealing with money, dealing with people. One, it helps them learn about business and how to manage their own funds, and two, it makes them more in the independent from their parents because they won't have to ask for their money. Sneakers is accessible, legal, and relatable for the younger generation. The resale market has no age limit you have to be in order to join, but let's take a look at the bigger picture. The resale industry itself is a $1.2 billion industry. In the market, 80% of shoes sold are Nikes and Jordans. Annually, resellers ended up making $338 million. One of Nike's competitors, Under Armour, had a total income of $204 million. This means that Nike's customers made more than Nike's competitors. So if you bought the Jordan 1 fragment back in 2014 for a retail price of $185, then you could have made 773% of your money back. And that's why it's more than just sneakers.